Nearly every time Fed Chairman Jerome Powell makes an appearance, whether it's the usual FOMC press conference or when testifying before Congress, he is careful to make mention of how the Fed is data-driven and how the Fed seeks to achieve price inflation, quote, at the rate of 2% over the longer run, unquote. This sounds nice, of course, and gives the impression that the Fed is concerned about keeping price inflation low. Historical experience, however, shows that keeping down price inflation is not exactly a priority for the Federal Reserve. The 2% price inflation target was introduced in the late 1990s as a way of allowing the Fed to get away with more price inflation. The 2% inflation target is designed in part to convince the public that constantly increasing price inflation is better than having prices stay flat or even go down. Indeed, the Fed's lack of interest in keeping price inflation low is demonstrated in part by how the Fed has repeatedly upped the target price inflation rate over the past 30 years. The 2% target was the result of a decision to mimic the policy of the European Central Bank, which had adopted a 2% target for the new euro currency in 1999. Before then, the only official legislative price inflation target had been 0%, as stated in the Full Employment and Balanced Growth Act of 1978. In the 1990s, some members of the Fed's Federal Open Market Committee, especially Janet Yellen, began calling for a higher target of 2%. After the launch of the euro, the Fed informally adopted a 2% target and formally adopted the policy in 2012. The policy, as stated, implied that the Fed would seek to keep the price inflation rate as close as possible to 2% as much as possible. Note the target was most definitely not 2% or lower, but simply 2%. Thus, during many periods of the past 20 years, we often heard complaints from Fed economists that price inflation was too low. The Fed repeatedly stated that it sought to push inflation higher to meet the 2% target. Less than a decade after the formal adoption of the 2% target, however, the Fed abandoned the straight-up target and turned toward pushing for 2% over the longer run, quote-unquote. The Fed explicitly stated the purpose of this change was to provide for, quote, a flexible average inflation target, unquote. The Fed said this change was necessary because price inflation had supposedly been too low for too long, and this newfound flexibility allowed for holding the target rate higher to bring up the longer-term average rate of price inflation. So, since 2020, targeting 2% inflation actually means running inflation above 2%, sometimes well above 2%, if the Fed decides that price inflation had been too low during some previous period. The Fed also has total flexibility in how it defines price inflation over the longer term. The longer term can be defined as any time period of the Fed's choosing. At the moment, the Fed tells us that the so-called longer term is the period from January 2012 until now. Of course, the time period we choose has a big impact on what our average annualized price inflation rate will be. If our starting point is January 2012, annualized price inflation is 2.2%. On the other hand, if our starting point is five years ago, then we're looking at 3.5% annualized inflation, or 80% higher than the 2% target. How interesting that the Fed just happens to have picked a longer run that ends up showing that the Fed has masterfully steered the U.S. economy toward 2.2%, so very close to its target rate. So we can see how the Fed just keeps moving farther and farther from any sort of solid upside target for price inflation. It went from 0% to a flexible longer run 2%. Some advocates for easy money are already calling for a new higher target of 3 or 4%. That may be the next step in the evolution of the Fed.